Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at moving between levels. So in order to move between the levels, you need to get the player object to the exit symbol. So we need to get the player object from here to here. Now in the way of that, we've got a lock and we've got a key. So we're going to um, create some code, which is going to check to see if when we touch the lock, we have the key. If we do have the key, then we're going to be able to move through to the next level. So let's start by firstly looking at um, the uh, lock object. So if I play the game at the moment, let me just move my character up here. So as when I start the game, I'm starting um, in close to the key. It's so all close to the lock, I should say. When I run the game, uh, currently I can move my character straight through the lock um, and straight to the exit. Well, that's not what we need because the lock should be blocking the, um, the character from doing so. So um, in order to do that, we need to set up a, um, a collision event to make sure that we check if we're colliding with a lock. And also in the same way as we did um, with one of the other objects, with the wall tiles, we need to make sure that we make this object solid, otherwise we'll be able to pass through it. So let's start doing that. Let's start with that. So we're going to close that down and we're going to go back onto the workspace and I'm going to open up my um, my player object. So I want to add an event to make sure that I'm checking uh, if I'm colliding with the lock. So I'm going to add an event. I'm going to uh, choose a collision event with objects and I'm going to select OBJ lock. Okay. And obviously if we're colliding with the lock, um, we're going to um, check to see firstly whether we have the key and secondly to stop us moving. So um, um, do we oh, no, so check for the key. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. So we also need to open up the um, the object for the uh, for the lock because what we need to be doing is making that lock solid. So we're going to change that um, to a solid, the same as we did with the wall. So I'm, che I'm checking this solid box on the OBJ lock. Okay, so let's see if that works before we go any further. So I'm up here now, and now you can see that I can't actually physically get through the lock because it's now solid. Okay, so what I need to do now is to work out whether or not uh, my player object has the key or not. So we're going to do that by using a variable in the same way um, as we did uh, before, um, we're going to check to see uh, whether or not um, the uh, player object has the key. So we're going to set the variable um, as we did for the um, shooting direction, and we're going to use that variable to record whether or not we have the key. So um, let's have a little look at that. So in the create event that we have already set up for our player, we want to uh, identify whether or not um, our player actually has the key or not. So um, we're going to start by uh, allocating a zero if the player doesn't have the key, and we're going to allocate one if the player has collected the key. So currently, at the start of the game, obviously our player object does not have the key. So we're going to uh, to declare a variable, I'm just going to call it has key. Has key equals zero. So that says that the player object currently does not have the key. Now it's coming up with the exclamation mark because it's using a variable that's not used anywhere else yet. So that's nothing to worry about at the moment. Okay. So that's fine. Um, so now what we're going to do is go and have a look at the uh, key object. So what we want to do is when we collide with the key, we want to change this value from a 0 to a 1. So we're going to add another event and we're going to check um, a collision with objects for the key. Okay, so um, player collecting the key. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is um, to change the variable or to destroy the object. Okay, so um, we will look at that in a minute. So the first thing we're going to do is to, is to declare uh, the fact that has key is now changed from zero to one. 
So let's do that now then. So let's, uh, if they collide with the key, if the player collides with the key, then we want to set has key equal to one. Okay, so what that does to the program, that uh, changes the variable has key from a zero, which it is at the create event for the player to one. So once you collide with the key, it changes it to one. We also need to destroy the key. Now, if I did instance underscore destroy, like that, that would um, destroy our character because the instance that we're in at the moment is the player object, okay? So what we need to do, we don't want to destroy the player. What we want to do is to destroy the key because once we've collected the key, we want to remove it from the screen. So we need to do this. We need to do with, as we did last time, open a bracket, other. We're gonna come down, we're gonna open those curly brackets. We're gonna do instance. underscore destroy the brackets and then we're going to close the curly brackets okay now that now will change has key to one and it will also destroy the instance so first off let's just make sure that when we do that um, you won't be able to see whether has key is one but you will be able to see whether or not it destroys the key. So let's uh, run the program. Okay, um, and I'm gonna have to walk all the way back around to get the key. Okay, let's shoot my monster out of the way. Bye bye monster. Okay, we're gonna come up down and we are going to collect the key. Boom, and down and away goes the key. Okay, so we know that the, the, uh, the key is destroyed once uh, we have um, touched it. So what we need to do now is to work out, um, is to remove the lock uh, once we collide with it, if we have the key. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that now as well. So we need to be on the, uh, the lock object, okay, and we need to do the following. We need to check to see, firstly, if uh, the key has been collected, and if it has, we need to destroy the lock. So um, we do that using an if statement. So the if statement uh, is something that you haven't done before. And what it does, it checks a condition. And um, if the condition is met, it does something. If it doesn't, it doesn't do it, okay? So uh, it will goes in the following way. So if, open a bracket, if uh, has key, which is our variable that holds the key, is equal to one, okay? Now, with uh, GameMaker and with um, Java coding, um, when you're checking to see if something is equals, you use double equals, okay? So if I did has key equals one, what that would change, what would that would do? What would It would be to change the value of the variable has key to one, okay? If I did equals equals one, what that does then, that checks to see if the value of has key is one. So if I did this, has key equals two, that would change the, the current value of the variable has key from one, which it currently is because we've picked the key up, to two, okay? If I did this, it would check to see if the value of has key is equal to two, okay? So there's a difference. So double equals is when you're checking if something is the is a particular value. So if has key equals one, okay? I'm gonna close the bracket and I'm gonna come down to the next line and then I'm gonna open a curly bracket. What we're then gonna do, we are going to um, change the value of has key back to zero because uh, when we destroy the lock, we want the uh, the value of has key to be reset to zero. So as when we go forward to the next level, we don't automatically register as having the key. So we're gonna set has key equal to zero. Put the semicolon in. And we are then going to do, uh, to destroy the lock. Now don't forget, if I did uh, instance underscore destroy, that would destroy 
the player because we're in the player okay so we need to do uh, the uh, the with other statement again so with other open the curly brackets because we've we're, so we're inside an if statement we're inside more curly brackets we're going to do instance underscore destroy okay with the semicolon then we're going to close the curly brackets for um, the with other statement and then we're going to close the curly brackets for the if statement okay so let's read through this so if if when i hit the lock so this is a collision event so when i hit the lock it's going to check if has key equals one okay if it doesn't equal one it's not going to do any of this at all it's just going to stop you going through the lock okay um if uh it does equal one then we're going to change the value of has key back to zero for when we go to the next level and then what this is going to do then is destroy the other instance which is in our in our uh, case the lock because we're writing this piece of code in the player object okay so that's what it should do so let's test it and see if it works so i'm just coming around to collect the key let's go back up let's get rid of this monster out of the way because i don't want that pushing me all the way back let's go into the lock and hopefully when we touch the lock it will destroy the lock okay and then we should be able to move forward to the exit which we can and then we move forward to the exit we haven't programmed the exit yet but that's what we're going to look at next so so everything's working fine so far so if we haven't got the key it stops us going through the lock let's just test that as well just before we go any further uh, let's just rerun that game um, there we go let's move around to the lock let's shoot the monster there we go uh, come around to the the lock i haven't got the key don't forget because the key is still there so i'm just checking that piece of code i've just written and there we go i can go through the lock so that's perfect exactly what we want okay so uh now then let's have a look at um, how we're going to move forward to the next level so in order to move forward to the next level the first thing we need to do is to have another level to move to so um, what we're going to do we're going to right click on rooms and we're going to create a room okay so there's room and we're going to call this rn underscore and let's say l oh, let's call it level two okay now i'm not i haven't put anything in the level yet um, that, that's absolutely fine the room size is, is wrong okay so we have to change that so let's go back to room one Let's see what room size we got. 1920 by 1080. Let's go over here and let's change that to 1920 by 1080. Okay. And let's zoom out so as my, I can see all of my room. There we go. If I just zoom out just one more step, you should be able to see that I've got uh, my whole room visible. Um, and um, I'm going to place my character. When I come into this level, let's say I'm going to place my character in the bottom I say the bottom left hand corner of the screen for now just to test that when our player comes into the next level that um, that it works correctly so um, in order for us to keep this consistent let's change room one's name as well so let's change that we're going to rename that and we're going to call it rm underscore level one okay to keep the, the naming consistent um, so happy with that so far so let's go back then and see how we code uh, moving to that level. So in the game, we're going to have three different levels. So to make this easier to code, we're going to apply the collision event. This time, rather than using the object player, we're going to use the object exit. And what it's going to do is going to check the current room. And whatever room we're in, we're going to go to the next level. And we do this using something called a case statement. So I'm going to write the statement out and then I'm going to explain to you how the statement works. So let's bring up the object for our exit and we're going to add an event. And this time again, it's going to be a collision event. But this time we're going to check whether we're colliding with the player. Okay. And this is going to be moved to level. So this, all this code is going to be moving to uh, a level. 
Okay. Okay, so what it's going to do, it's going to it's going to switch the room. So, so with the command we're going to be using is switch room. Um, and what it's going to do is going to check what room we're currently in, and then it's going to switch uh, to um, a given room depending on which one we're in. So it's going to give us, um, I'm going to type in just the one room for now, because we've only got the extra level. But when we add the third level, we'll add to the case statement, okay? So it's switch, open a bracket, room. Okay, now switch room doesn't end with a semicolon because it's a function, okay? So we open our curly brackets, and then we start with our case statement. So it's case, so where, R M underscore level one. Okay, so that's our our uh, our level that we're currently on. If you can see it there, look. Okay, R M underscore level one. Okay, colon. And now we're going to switch room, so it's going to be room underscore go to. Okay, so that's a function, and then it's going to. Um, ask us what room we want to go to. So we can either put in a, a name of the room or we can type in next or previous. But we're gonna go to uh, room uh, level two. So I'm gonna put open a bracket and I'm gonna put RM underscore level two. Okay, I end that with a semicolon. Once it's done that and moved to the room, we need to tell the case statement to stop. Okay, so we do that by using something called a break command. So you just type in break, like that, okay? And then what we're gonna do is just close off that square brackets, or those curly brackets. Now inside this case statement, we can have a number of different rooms. So if, for example, I had, um, I was in room one, and I wanted to go to room two, I could do the following. So you can copy and paste text. So if, for example, I had a, a level three, which I haven't at the moment, but I will do soon, I could do this, okay? So I copied that statement, okay? So, and all I've got to do then is change this. So if I was in level two, then I could go to room level three, okay? So it'll check to see what level I'm currently on, and it will, um, it's, it's coming up with an exclamation mark because I haven't got a level three at the moment, okay? But um, if I had created a room, that wouldn't be there. So it would check to see what room I'm currently in, and then it would go to the appropriate room level, uh, identified by the go to statement. So um, let's get rid of this, because I don't want that error in my code at the moment. Okay, and let's give this a go. So let's see if this works. So I'm gonna run my game, okay? So let's see. So um, I know that the, the lock won't open if I don't have the key, so let's take the key. Okay, let's move around, let's get rid of my monster. There we go. And then we're gonna come up around the maze. Down we go. Open the lock, has key equals one, on the exit, and now I'm in my second room. Okay, so that's how we switch between levels.